Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome back to Rufio. If this is your first time here, my name is Joe, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you're gonna hit that subscribe button right now, that would be fantastic. But you are here for the UK slash European market watch. We've got plenty of these out that are covering the US market, which is absolutely insane by the way. But we're gonna take a look and see how things change here over the other side of the pond and see how we're getting affected by the shakeup in the meta at the moment, what meta there is of course. And we're gonna take a look at a whole bunch of different stuff. We're gonna whip through quite quickly today. We're not gonna to spend too much time in detail discussing why these changes have happened. Most people will have a rough idea. So we're just gonna brief you on what changes have happened and what direction things are heading in. And just a little bit of my opinion on whether you should be holding cards, selling them, that kind of stuff. So we'll dig right in, shall we? Okay, so quickly before we get stuck in, as always, if there are any crazy banging noises in the background, I'm at my work. I'm recording here in front of the casting couch behind me and uh, sometimes people are walking around the office. Not too many at the moment because of the lockdown and all of that. But let's get stuck into the actual market watch, shall we? So we're just taking a look first at Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Lieber, which has been absolutely skyrocketing. This is one I was tipped off about and most people are aware of. Um, going through the fucking sky at the moment, right up to the 30 euro mark to get an English copy in good condition. And that is the parameters of which we're looking for on any given card at any given time. Um, we're gonna to continue to look at some of the other crazy movements in the market as well. We've also got Infinitrack Anchor Drill, which again is shooting up towards that 30 euro mark around the 25 at the moment and continuing to rise. Uh, this has continued up from around 18 only a month ago. So this is quite a big spike. Expect these to continue to rise at least somewhat. Um, now may be a good time to try and cash in on these, especially if you're not making much use of them at the moment. Next up, we have Magician Souls, which is also heading on back up. This bombed when they announced the reprint of this card. A lot of people started to sell these off because they were already very, very high. It is worth noting that they are still considerably lower than they were. So it has taken an overall... Uh, a, con a consistent dip from the time that they were released. However, it is beginning to see a bit more play again. People starting to include this in their decks. And as a result, we're starting to see this creep up. People picking up their sets, anticipating when the competitive play comes back into the fold and they will need these for their decks then. Whilst we're playing online, it's not too bad. But of course, things are going to change. Now is probably a good time to maybe be picking these up unless you can hold out for the reprint. Next up, we're taking a look at some Zodiac cards. Just a couple here. I wanted to take a look at how things were shaken up on the market with these. Of course, a lot of people are starting to try this deck out again, maybe as a pure variant. Although we've only got the one barrage, everything else is still very consistent and, and good. Um, it's worth noting that it is, it's changed the way it plays quite a bit in terms of it can't go through those crazy plays like it did with Rapier, but I'm sure you're all already aware of this. So I wanted to take a look at two of the ones that are normally a little bit more pricey and see how they're getting on. So of course, we're starting off with Shaka 9, uh, which is around the 12 euro mark is the, the kind of trend at the moment, although you can get them as low as eight euros if you're so inclined. Uh, not a bad pickup. I don't think that these are going to get reprinted anytime soon. So given that it's a single print card, might be a good time to pick it up. And of course, if you're wanting to play a Zodiac engine, you are going to need ulti whip tails because you can't play it in any other rarity, let's be honest. OTS pack five, uh, we have had a cheaper reprint, but of course it's not in ulti, so really that's what you want to be playing. And the avid players of the old Zodiac decks know that that's what you want to play it in is the highest possible rarity. So we're seeing these creep up from around the 20 euros mark right up towards the 30 euros mark in the space of a couple of months. Now, obviously bear in mind that in that time, Dryden has come off the list. Barrage has gone on uh, down to one, but a lot of people are experimenting with this deck at the moment. Uh, it has a lot going for it, the same as it always has. The question of the consistency, of course, is in doubt because uh, that's what always made the deck crazy good. And of course, all the hits were intended to bring that down a notch. But it seems to be doing quite well, actually, competitively. It seems to be an off-the-cuff pick, and it seems to be doing quite well from what I'm seeing. Uh, this is a great card to have in your collection, of course. If you want the nicest, highest rarity, this is definitely the one to get. This will probably only ever creep up from here. If Zodiac ever comes back into the fold properly, you can bet that these are going to skyrocket. Next up, we're taking a look at some Cyber Dragon cards. We've got Naxter on the on the screen here. I actually thought this may have started to head down a little bit because people are only really running the two copies now, not always three as much as they were before. But actually, the trend's going the complete opposite way. It's going up and up and up and up. Uh, we're seeing it heading up 
from around the 13 euros mark as high as 16, 17 euros. Uh, this at one time was half this amount. So continue to expect this to see uh, a continual rise at the moment. I think a lot of people are heading out and buying this because you've had the reprints of Cyber Emergency. And so, of course, the demand for this has increased and, of course, pushed the price up. It's also one of those cards that was written off, or rather, it was in a deck that was written off for this Master Rule 5. But actually, the deck is coming out and doing quite well, given all the things considered. Uh, and I think that we'll continue to see this creep up a little bit. Again, it's a, it's a one-time print card. So uh, if, you, if you're not looking to play the deck now, it's probably a good time to sell them because it will probably eventually get reprinted anyway. Certainly, I don't think it will be too long down the line. Uh, but if you're looking to pick these up, now is probably a good time as any. It's only going to continue to rise. Next up, we're looking at Cyber Eternity Dragon. This was a weird one that I'd seen in the US. I know was bought out at least for a short period of time. However, the movement on the market here doesn't seem all that crazy, to be quite honest with you. Um, we're, we're seeing it sat around the 10 euro mark. I don't even understand why it's that high. I don't, I don't know if anyone's going to play this or if they are playing this. I certainly haven't seen it in any decks at all. Uh, so again, this is this is sort of a non-mover. Uh, I mean, if they're as high as 10 euros, I'd probably just sell them up because it's fucking garbage anyway. Next up, we're looking at the Signet Mining reprint. This has actually continued to go down. Although we're seeing it yo-yo on the spikes on the graph, the overall trend is downward. This is going to continue to get cheaper. This is actually probably a really good time to pick this up for the price of like 7 euros each is, is buttons, but... The, the Cyburst decks are getting so much, so much support. It's only a matter of time before something breaks one Cyburst type archetype again. Of course, people want the original rarity, so those will maintain some value. But I expect that this print in particular will also go back up unless we see another print in, in short notice. Next up, I decided to take a look at a, you know, a handful of Orcus cards. I wanted to see the more pricey ones and see how they were getting on. I was actually surprised by the price of Orcus Trade Return. Uh, I sold mine up, and when I sold them up, they were around uh, probably about the 15 euro mark. Um, when I originally got them, they were around eight or so, and I picked up three. And they rocketed around that time, and then they bombed again because it wasn't see and play. But of course, with uh, Gearsu coming out, I think a lot of people are sort of starting to experiment again. And Orchestrate Return is a fantastic card for the deck. There's no question. It's also only had the one print, so that is something to consider. And But overall, it's heading up. It's around the 20 euros mark, but we're seeing it yo-yo up as far as 30 euros at times. So expect this to continue to rise, especially with the hype surrounding Gearsu. Next up, we've got Ding Gearsu. Now, if you want to get ultra prints of this card, it is absolutely Fuck all now. It is so, so cheap. It's crazy. Uh, you can get them for, again, probably around three, four euros. It's, it's really, really cheap. Considering once upon a time it was so expensive, you were lucky if you managed to sell up before that reprint came out because these are crazy now, like how low they are. However, the ulti prints are still holding a decent amount of value. They were around the 40 euro mark the last time I checked. They're now down to around 32 euros it is the kind of given thing. The price trend is closer to 30 on the whole. However, I do think this is one of these cards that will eventually pick up again. Like most OTS ultis, they maintain a really good value, if nothing else, for the collector's market. This card is still very, very relevant. And if Gearsu does come out and uh, starts to break the game a little bit and people want to start playing this engine again, then you can expect that this will skyrocket too. Lastly, on the Orcus type, I wanted to talk a little bit about Galatea, which actually, the trend you can see here is crazy. Not so long ago, they were a 15 euro card, and now all of a sudden, not even a month later, we're seeing a creep up well over the 40 mark, because again, people are picking this deck up, uh, and something that, you know, people weren't necessarily anticipating it going up this much. So anyone who bought them early, you were very, very smart. They're now a minimum of 40 euros on card market, and I think that that is only going to continue to increase where people are experimenting with Gearsu and this deck as a whole. The engine's always been quite good. It's had some bricking issues, but having Gearsu added to that, having access to a few different engines at the same time that you didn't necessarily have as much consistency with before is going to only ever push this price up, at least in the time being. Next up, we're looking at Eldritch with those fantastic fucking sassy boots that he wears. His price is only going up and only seems to have gone up even more since the full art was released. And that, to me, makes absolute sense. If you've seen how fantastic his boots are, and if you haven't, I suggest you go check it out. Beautiful. And the price rise is understandable. This deck has been doing fantastic across all of the online events that we've seen. It's very much had a, a good representation in top cuts on the whole. It seems to be very, very consistent. And considering it's actually a relatively small engine, you can fit so much different stuff in there. And to think that there will probably only ever be more support that comes out for this card. I think this is a good long-term investment. Of course, the price is high, but I think that 
if it goes down, it won't be for a while. And if it does, it won't be by a significant amount. I don't see that there's going to be any reprints on this anytime soon. So if you're going to pick it up and you want to play the deck, now is the time. And you'll get the most usage out of it down the line. Next up, I wanted to take a look at one or two rock cards and things like that because of the Adamantipator stuff that's going on at the moment, which is doing fantastic, by the way. Uh, I just wanted to see how that's reflected in some of the kind of off-the-cuff cards. I don't know whether necessarily all of these are being played, but I have seen them played in, say, for example, Rock uh, BA, the, the Block Dragon version and that kind of thing. So I wanted to see maybe whether people were going to try and try this sort of stuff out. So the first one I wanted to go for was Fossil Diner. Fossil Diner, of course, locks your opponent... Well, it locks both players out of the special summon, um, but you normally set this up typically at the end of your board. Now, I don't know whether there's a way to consistently do that in Adamantopeia, but of course, being a rock uh, type level four, it has a lot of synergy there going for it anyway. Now, the Light Destruction versions are all sat around the 10 euro mark. Um, that's in good condition. To go for anything a bit better, you're looking towards the 20 euro mark, 18 to 20 euros, which is actually quite high. This price has continued to rise up for the Secret Rare. I'm sure there are much cheaper variants on the prints, but this is usually the one that people are going to want to play. One to keep an eye on, maybe one to sell up though, if you've already got and you want to cash in on it whilst the price is high. Next up, we're taking a look at Power Giant, the ulti copy, of course. We want it in the nicest rarity. The prices on this are kind of yo-yo and to and fro. We're seeing it going anywhere from around four euros, which of course was quite some time ago, uh, as far back as a couple of months ago. But of course, with all this hype surrounding rock, uh, that kind of thing, we're starting to see a pickup overall in the trend. Like I say, sat around the eight euro mark at the moment. This will probably push up to around the 10 overall. Probably a good time to consider selling up unless you want to hold your ultis for collector value down the line. Next up, we're taking a look at Adamant Cepeta Researcher. The, the price on this is starting to flatten out on that curve. Of course, all these boxes are being cracked, but the demand is still going to be there. I don't see it dipping much more than it is now. So it's sat at the moment around the 42 euro mark. I think that's a pretty solid price and probably where it'll stay. I know that everything else in the set pretty much other than Eldritch stuff is absolutely tanking. Uh, so unless you're hunting these specifically, probably not a good idea to pick up the boxes. Unless, of course, you just want a bunch of stuff to shove in your binder. Uh, but Adamant Cepeta a researcher is probably going to continue to demand around this kind of price mark. Next up, I wanted to take a look at Predator Plant Vert Anaconda again. Uh, one that I've consistently been covering on this because I wanted to see how the price was changing on this overall. Uh, it's continued to creep up slowly, which is fully what I expected. I do think that once competitive play resumes in the physical sense, we are going to see this spike through the roof because a lot of people are going to be playing it. A lot of people are going to be picking it up in anticipation of playing more fusion-based decks, the likes of Dragoon and that kind of thing. So just keep an eye on this one at the moment. Maybe one to pick up sooner rather than later. I wanted to touch on a couple of Plunder Patrol cards as I had been asked by a good friend of mine. And uh, it, they are shooting up through the roof. He's, he's made the right call here to take a look at these. We're seeing them go right up to 11 euro mark on Redbeard. Uh, the average is around the 7 euro mark. So this probably indicates that we are going to see a rush shooting up with all the new support that's having come out. Uh, we are next taking a look at Whitebeard as well, which is facing exactly the same scenario. The price is just rushing up and going continuously up. I expect that this will probably settle around where it is now, at least for a time before it dips. If you've got these now, it's possibly a good time to consider selling them up. And finally, I just wanted to touch on Nibiru, something that is seeing more play again into the fold. This kind of dropped off for a little while with all the combo decks that are going round at the moment, in particular with Adamantopator. This is a card that people are looking at playing. Of course, it's searchable uh, with Gallant Granite, which is something that people are considering. It's a good way to even potentially set up your board and then protect it from your opponent the next turn, knowing that they can't commit to all those summons without blowing out everything that they've got. Uh, it is creeping back up again towards around the nine euro mark. However, we've seen it go as high as 10. Uh, will it go much higher? I'm not too sure. Maybe not more than a couple of euros more than it is now. I don't see it creeping down for a little while though because combo decks are back in town and this is one of the ultimate counters to that. So that is all for the Market Watch today, guys. Like I say, I wanted to push through a little bit quicker today than I had done in the past. We covered a lot more ground, I feel, and there's a lot more to talk about. The, the market is changing wildly at the moment because of all the online play. We're not seeing a physical format take shape so therefore there's a big broad representation of so many different decks that it's getting people excited and of course master all fibers opened up the floodgates for 
everyone. Expect the market to continue to be rocky, particularly in the US, but hopefully in the UK and the EU it won't get too wild. Although we do see our little spikes here and there that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Thank you very much again for checking in. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.